that's got to be Justin. You have an al you have a male ally. Be very happy, Paul, tonight. I'm excited. You sound tired. Goodness. So tired. You need an edible. He needs no. I go sleep. Why would I need an edible? That seems backwards. <laughs> he needs cannabis sativa, mm -hmm. the invigorating type. Seriously. Come on here, all groggy. And, and, COVID and pouty and cold too. Mode. Wait, and pouty. You've been in cold mode. You are. Wait till you watch the replay. You gonna see how you pouty. Yeah. Poor boo. Wow. Well, did you during the show? Mm -hmm. Wow. Was I that boring? No, I've been up forever. Uh -oh. what's, what's forever? Listen. Wait, hold that. Hold that. Let me do the intro. Hold on. <laughs> hey guys, how are you? Welcome back to the Ask Selena Live After Show. This is episode twelve. We're still plugging along, even with a break. We're still lit. Um, <laughs> thank you for tuning in. I'm Janine Truitt. I'm your host, Officer for Talent Think Innovations LLC, based here in Port Jeff, New York. And I focus on workforce planning, digital marketing, advisory, just to name a few things. If you're ever interested in what I do at scale, you can find me at www.talentthinkinnovations.com. And I will pass the mic. Who's next? Hello, everyone. I am back. Yay! I am back. It wasn't the same. Oh, I was flu written Ooh. and bed written last week. It was bad. It was bad in the streets. But I'm back. Um, my name is Sarah Morgan. I am the Chief Excellence Officer of Buzzaroni LLC, which is a human resources consulting boutique. And you can check me out on my new website, buzzerudyllc.com, which is Let's finally go. built and yes. ready to go. Flex so on them. Super, super excited about that. Um, yeah, that's it. That's all I got to say right now. Yay. Doctor. Hi, my name is Dr. Paul McNeil. I'm the founder of Unusable Security. Uh, basically, we make marketing and cybersecurity analytics easy. So we take care of using your data to help you make more money as well as keep your customer and employee data safe. Um, I'm in that, located in Nashville, Tennessee, and you can reach me uh, on Twitter at UsableSecGuy. So let's, let's just address your background for a second. Where are you today, Pablo? Huh? Where, where exactly are you? Where the, 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 the scenery has changed, or is this for your videos? Uh, this is for my videos. It's a little backdrop. We're trying to elevate the game a little bit. Yeah. A little faux library. A little, a little faux, faux library. Right. Yeah. Faux it reminds library. me of, like, you remember when houses used to have fake chicken at Christmas? Right. Back in the day. That's what it puts me in the what mind. What is of. this? Yeah. No, I'm shooting, uh, I'm shooting that... Um, course for apps for kids because i gotta i gotta start that program this summer so i didn't want just a white background it's kind of boring so it is you know. very very appealing to the eye but yeah, yeah. so it looks better on it looks better on camera when you don't feel like it. i imagine <laughs> <laughs> i forgot it was there <laughs> I forgot. Oh my god. I've been in and out of meetings all day. Today's been crazy. I oh. was on mom, mom Hello? schedule and I got no kids. Ditto. Ditto. Hello? Wait, who's Hello? Oh wait. The dragonfly oh, talking? Wait. Can you I'm muting you. <laughs> wait, do you wanna talk? <clears throat> I need to know. You need to throw it in the chat. He's like, Hello? Hello? How you gonna just <laughs> look if you do want to you know hop in do let me know justin i'm sorry to mute you i just yeah i didn't know what was happening it was just a lot <laughs> um so guys cbd what do you think of it 
Do you think it's a go? Do you think it's a, a good thing or it needs some more exploration? I think it's all a good thing. Like, why are we so afraid of the weed industry? I don't understand. Like, what is taking so long with the legalization of this? This has the potential to do so much for the American economy. What are we waiting on? Like, let's get this popping. I can open my edible arrangement shop and I can sell weed shaped flowers and retire in style. That's that's what needs to and, happen. And this is what I'm told. You know, I, I'm about this life. Like <clears throat> I, I don't I'm not sure what my footprint's gonna be into it, but I'm like, I could do yeah. something with this. This could be good. Mm -hmm. If not just an advocate, because that's enough at this particular yes. point. Absolutely. Um, but I agree. I feel like Ever since I found out that the U.S. was granted a patent on marijuana, this has irked my nerves because I'm just like, why would you have a patent on something if you are criminalizing it across the country and incarcerating people for years and years and years and destroying families and on and on and on with the knowledge that this thing cures like a laundry list of things? Right. I mean, it's literally a laundry list. I, I wouldn't even attempt to list them all here. And so it's just very curious to me. Now more people have figured out that they do have the patent. And so they've been getting lambasted for it. So now the backtrack is, well, yes, we have a patent on it, but the patent is specific to um, the degenerate to solving for the de degeneration of brain function not the overall plan, but that's not how the patent reads. It reads as if they've got a patent on the plant and any derivatives of, but that's the backtrack. Mm -hmm. I don't believe that. Con you know, conspiracy theories. Right. And I mean, like with the hemp plant, that one even boggles the mind to me even more because there are no psychoactive properties in hemp. Like I use hemp seeds all the time. I sprinkle it on my yogurt and whatever. There's nothing. Um, you get that at Whole Foods. And so like years and years and years ago, they used that for lots of things, like to build things, to secure homes. It was used for medicine, like everything. And then it just got outlawed. And it's like, well, why? You have to ask because it cured so many things. Coming mm -hmm. back to my theory that me and Pablo were kind of talking <coughs> about last week. I mean, it was more around charities, but I'm always asking the question, like, do you really want to solve for these bigger problems? Because if you do, then you would. And if you don't, then you don't, right? Because well, there's something- I always, think about, I always think about Chris Rock when he made that joke about how America is still mad that they cure polio and all mm -hmm. the money that they lost out like the money is in maintenance like the money is in you having some kind of chronic illness that we mm -hmm. can give you a drug for that will keep you healthy but not cure you so you're not going to die you're going to live with this thing you're going to take this pill forever you're going to spend a thousand dollars a month forever in order to to take this pill so that this thing doesn't kill you the money is in the medicine so they haven't figured out how to make the money off a of weed yet and all of its derivatives. They haven't figured that out yet. When once I think they're close, which is why we're probably at the point where they're more willing to legalize it because they figured out how they can tax it, how all the sister and adjacent industries that will come. It's so much money to be made we're not going to leave that on the table. So we're going to figure out a way, I would say probably within the next three to five years to make it happen, um, particularly because, and this is my conspiracy theory, they have not been able to successfully replace and repeal Obamacare. And if the law as is currently written continues to go forward, at some point we're going to have universal medical coding. And if we get to the point where we have universal medical coding and pharmaceutical companies and hospitals can only bill certain percentages like it and that marketplace becomes more competitive. It will fuck the economy. Weed will save the economy. 
that's my conspiracy theory. It, it sounds plausible to me. I mean, it just, it's mind boggling. I think what I'm really looking forward to seeing is how they walk back the criminalization of it all. Yeah. Right. Cause like <clears throat> what kind of apology do you give to those families, to the many people who were, you know, but that's the piece. I don't think they want to like, we are such as we are so ingrained as a nation in the criminalization of black and brown people, which is the majority of the people who went to jail mm -hmm. and are doing time or have done time for crimes related to sale, distribution, growth, whatever, of marijuana, we not letting that go. Like, and I think that is probably part of the delay. It's, it's like, oh shit, like black and brown people could potentially get rich off of this. Well, we can't really have that. So let's figure out you know, let's make sure we put all those safeguards in place. But the reality is, if there's no retroactive release of these people from prison, expungement of their records, you're going to have people who made an illegal career growing, selling, producing at high levels, clearly, because they ended up in jail for significant amounts of time, so they had to be doing a good job of it, who won't be able to work in the industry legally where they have all of this fucking experience how is that justice so i'm i'm curious to see because we this nation was built on the oppression followed by the criminalization of black and brown people and we don't plan on backing off of that anytime soon so i'm i'm curious to see how they're going to deal with that piece cuz somewhere the man is mad already. Oh, already. for sure. For sure. I mean, they, they've got to walk back a lot of narratives. I mean, one of which, so my daughter, um, my, my oldest, she's in this too good for drugs class, right, that they do in school. <laughs> and so she comes home a day and she's like, mommy, she's like, they said that marijuana kills you. And so keep in mind that I, you know, for all intents and purposes, I, I'm now a 420-year, or at least I'm going to claim that, right? And so I'm listening to her, and I'm like, ooh, that's not, mm-mm. So, it, you know, it was a weird parenting moment because it's like, clearly, I want her to pay attention and too good for drugs and, and hear, you know, the things she ought not to do. But I had to, like figure out how to finesse the conversation so she understood that what she heard was not exactly true because that's not true there is no documented human anywhere ever in the history of ever that has died as a result of smoking weed or you know whatever and so that they shared that was just like what um and particularly in now in a state where we're about to legalize that whole conversation about we don't use marijuana and it's a gate it's a gateway drug and all the shit that they it was told a lie. us it was, was always a, black a lie. lie and so i'm just like why are y'all peddling this bullshit or are you just going to leave it up to us parents which is fine i you know i made it plain but it was just it was an awkward parenting moment because it was like well why even go there but i guess they got you know it's in the curriculum and they've got to do that but mm -hmm. it just shows you just how not real time education is because she came home like mommy did you know <laughs> like, oh, like, so I don't know, like i mean when you think about alcohol right prohibition there was no real apology to anybody when they made it legal again. It was just kind of like a, eh, let's hit everyone up on tax evasion this time. Like, But they did free some of the people who were in, because they were white. They did free some of the people who were in jail and they did um, allow them to go back to selling liquor, which mm -hmm. they do not seem to have any intention to do with the black and brown people who are in prison 
for and or awaiting trial for weed, even in the states where it's been legalized, they're not handling the retroactive justice piece still. It would be too, it would be a different scale, right? So you got to look at the prison industry now too, right? So now you're messing with other kinds of money on top of the mm-hmm. already money for the weed game. So it's like, right. it's the a prison money is its own economy. It's prison money argue. is its own game. Yeah, and you've got it's arguably fifteen more. to twenty percent of our of our national economy at this point, which is re- yeah. unbelievable, ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. no, I mean, there's there's all sorts of entanglements. I mean, they they allot USPTO allotted for like thirty nine patents last year, even with the U.S. having a pat the overall patent that they claim is is only allotting for one specific issue, but okay. Um, And so what's happening is all these companies that keep cropping up with different formulations and usages for this plant, now the U.S. can come, they're all like ensuing each other. Like, oh, well, I have a patent and mine does this and yours kind of does slightly the same thing. So I had it first. So I'm going to sue you. That's not a true mm-hmm. thing. And it's so like, this is what's happening. So it, I'm just seeing like all this infighting that will happen because of this, because the reality is, is the plant is ages old. Um, and the only thing that they're really doing is using different portions of the plant to treat different things as their research kind of illuminates that. Um, but they all are looking for the Shangri-La, the one little thing, you know, that's going to be so vastly different. And there's, there's not really anything vastly different. It's just they're applying it to different problems. Um, so it's another way for the government to basically say, oh, we'll give you a patent because you've made some sort of case, but you're wide open to being sued. Which I mean, but that, that's the same in, that's the same in software uh, now, like where a lot of people have been really pushing too much to get patents as much in software anymore. And they're doing more trade secrets and stuff because we're at a point now where so many, so much of the basic code sets are the same or you're doing similar things. And so, um, a lot of times when you hear of like tech startups coming out, they tell you not to even waste your time trying to patent it just to worry about keeping, protecting whatever with trade secrets in terms of keeping your in-house stuff secret and not waste as much time with patents because it doesn't move fast enough. And a lot of times by the time that patent's granted, there's some other newer technology that's out that is only slightly different or you only have to modify it just ever so slightly for it to count as its own new thing right um and so i see that being something that probably will be picked up in the marijuana industry as far as these patents are concerned i think everyone's jumping on it now just because because even when you have a patent the onus becomes on you to defend it so the government's not going to go out oh this person's violating your patent so now you got to come out the pocket and pay somebody to sit around and look and try to prove and so forth and so on. And so it will be really difficult probably in the next 10, 12 years for somebody to really prove that like my marijuana plant is highly similar or the same as theirs. They have to like hire teams of people to just go around buying different types of weed and analyzing it, I guess, or something. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I uh, think, I think what it is, is in the medical community, you know, you get, uh, you get kudos for having a patent, you know, yeah. it's not so much the the application of what it can actually do for it. It's more so like to be able to say out there, I've got a I patent. Got doesn't mm-hmm. even it could be bullshit it's just that you say it and then that suddenly brings your cool factor like way up as a result but yeah i find the infighting very interesting and i find the okie doke even more interesting that they're giving them out because again if you know this is the end why but money right i mean patents aren't cheap so patents of cheap income Right, the lawsuits that come from defending your patent isn't cheap. Like it's just all a ploy to yeah. add the pocket. Yeah. What do we think about CBD or any of the 
FDA regulated, like good thing, bad thing, murky. Mm. I mean, I know people that mess with, with uh, CBD and, but I also, one of mine was telling me that some of the CBD oils might still contain some THC. And I know it's supposed to be like less than a certain percentage and you're fine, but yeah. you're not always able to tell which. So then you're like sitting over here thinking that you're good to go. And then you do get scanned on a random drug test and now you're out because trouble, trouble. you know that cbd oil wasn't as clean as you thought so i think i feel like um what is it cat williams said in his stand up that one time like if you got stuff going on then kind of stay away from it but if you're not really doing anything with your life like uh, do what you gotta do you know? <laughs> like i personally that's not my that's not my ministry in life like that's not my thing i've always been <laughs> I've been I've been for I've been for twenty adjacent. So I always have snacks on the deck. So, uh, oh my god. That's not my thing, but you know, I can respect it and I think that um especially with all the research coming out and so forth, it doesn't seem as big a deal as people have made it. I don't see everyone's brain frying. Uh, like on uh, you remember the old egg? What was it like? This is your brain. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Any question? I learned it by watching oh, my. you, Dad. Right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I feel like that was super excessive. The the whole like war on drugs and just saying no and all that fun stuff. Um, but uh, I don't know. I mean, I feel like if I could open up a like a snack shop next door or across the street similar to what you're saying sarah like it's a win. we should all just i already buy like a row. Anyway. We'll just buy a row we should absolutely edible absolutely. arrangements um i don't know what, what would be my stance like, would be like i don't know i'll have to think about what my my, my pardon is it mine would be like a Mine would be more like, like a lounge, like with couches and stuff, like those old coffee shop stuff from like the like 90s a, like show. A, like a hookah shop kind of thing. Yeah, but like, you know, so like couches and then instead of hookah, it would be like all the snacks and stuff. So like hot Cheetos and cheese puffs and like the just, worst shit. Stuff, just mm -hmm. stuff that people will eat when they have the munchies and don't care about calories and stuff and stuff I can buy for like a dollar. I'd be like, here you go, five bucks. You're not worried about it. Just sit down and enjoy. Here's the internet. I need you to upgrade your snacks at your shop. I'm not coming for no Cheetos. No. <laughs> I'm not I'm not patronizing your shop for no Cheetos. It's not, not for doing. you. It's for the college kid on the go. Pull your Uber up and uh, grab yeah, you some sativa and come okay. sit, sit in this couch. I'm not your target That's customer. I'm not your target no. customer demographic. Okay. I, You're I'm not. With, You're I'm not. with the lounge thing, though. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, I'm not a lounge. Went, so when we no, it's like, it's, like, it's more like a little, you know, kind of like um, that Moesha vibe, the like the den type situation. He's so old college. school. He's oh, not that's a millennial of you, Doc. That was so millennial. Oh, wow. What? <laughs> the Moesha reference. That was so yeah. that was so millennial. Is, is that millennial? <laughs> Love it. No, what, I, what, else, what should I have referenced? That I don't you're a millennial, so that's exactly <laughs> what you should have said. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying what you have referenced. What what other um nah I, I think I like the I lounge. Think when I think, yeah, when I think lounges, I think um, Kathy the Balzac from the Cosby Show. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> with Theo and his friends. That's my, that's my, yes. that's my preference. That's my Indeed. frame of reference. Okay. As you do. Um, that's it. Okay. Noah, I'm, I'm with the lounge. I was at a hookah lounge on Tuesday. I mean, you know, I remember when that was like, hookah what I'll is that doing. oh my god oh my i remember god. i like when i was in college i remember i was always the the person that orchestrated our out our outgoings and events and what club we were going to and so i remember i found my first two or whatever in the village and i'm like yo we're gonna just go do hookah like what the hell what the hell is hookah i'm like trust me it's amazing 
And so we go and we're all sitting like, you know, <laughs> cross legs and shit on Moroccan <laughs> rugs. Like it was the authentic shit back then. You know, the guy came with a little thing on, you know, putting the coals and, and then out of nowhere, like it was like I graduated and I thought, you know, that was like a really niche thing for us. And then I graduated and all of a sudden it was like hookah lounge, hookah cafe, hookah, hookah, hookah. It's everywhere. It's yeah. everywhere. I'm like, what the hell? And then I found out people were using the hookah to smoke other shit. I was like, what's happening right now? <laughs> like, is the hookah not enough for you? Because the who I still contend, quite frankly, that there's something a little different about hookah. There's just something just a little different about hookah. Like I've never yeah. I wouldn't, I, well, I don't really know what it is to be truly high, so I can't really say what that is, but there is something. This is trippy something. Like, anytime I've done it, I'm like, ooh, okay, that's nice. <laughs> it's like, it's just different. Um, and nobody will tell me exactly what it is, but um, yeah, I could see a nice CBD lounge. I mean, the place where I have my events at, it's so chill. Like, I mean, she sells the CBD coffees and she does the whole edibles thing and it's like a little garden wonderland and you just like zonk just chill she's just like yeah go back smoke a joint yes go back have a cbd coffee <laughs> like <laughs> and she makes bank i mean into the front of her shop they're just flowers she makes you know bouquets and that's so dope. yeah that's cool i mean you can't beat it so there's like all these little things that are coming up. Like even Saturday, I'm going to a tastemakers event that it's like so underground, like you have to be a member. So I, I have to admit that I'm very proud of myself that I was even cool enough to become a member. I did it just as a case study. No, honestly, because I mean, you know, I'm not all that young, but I'm young. But I was like, let me just try. And this 30 year old told me that I should. She's like, yeah, girls just join and I'm like oh you're so cute <laughs> like I don't I even it. know if I'm cool enough but I was like all right I'll try and so I did and then I got like the email like hey you're in I was like oh shit <laughs> bomb yeah yes, bitch. <laughs> I'm in y'all are some generation experts that's some generation <laughs> like, this must be how you all feel right here oh, okay. yes <laughs> yes. I mean, well, I mean, after a certain time, you know, you kind of generally accept that your time has passed for certain things. Yeah, you know, you're like not you're not as cool anymore. Like your coolness is different. So yeah, right. that's fair. I'll give you that. Yeah. I I've, I've been coming to that realization lately. Already, cool. but you're still in your I early. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh. oh wait, you're not even thirty yet. What am I saying? I I'll be 30 in December. Don't try to. Oh, try boy, to I'll be forgetting. Years. Damn. It's it's shifting. It's a different. It's a different vibe. You know. Everybody's it's a different for dudes. Now. The shift when the shift happens because I feel like for women, it's, we shift around like 30 to 33. Like, is that's the point where you go? Hmm, I'm getting old. Like, is it different for dudes? No, I think I think. Um, I think also it has to do with region also. So like if I were in New York, I wouldn't feel no kind of way yet. But now everybody down here is getting like married and kids like mm -hmm. super young. Like my friends got kids that are like 15. You know what I mean? Like I got like, we got like 10, eight year olds. People got three year olds running around. Like it's a lot, it's a different situation. It's just like, oh man, okay. I guess this is, this is how we rocking out now. We just... Oh, uh, brunches, brunches are real different. <laughs> real, been high got, tier. Yeah, oh, the, brunch, yeah. The, the brunch game has been slowly shifting. You got to like think twice about whose brunch you roll to now. It's a different game. People wow. are pulling up with babies and toddlers. And, that's you know, so that's Y'all are actually you doing half the meal food. now. We don't even always get the full meal out. Sometimes, you know, we got to leave early for the naps. So you're just like, uh, okay, all right, this is how we get down. So I am much more lit than y'all then, for sure, because I don't have these problems. I'm out here. I mean, I feel like you're <laughs> What are you talking about? 
<laughs> I, ain't got no, I ain't got no kids on my back. I'd be sure like, bye. Right. Smooth right. Smooches. These kids can't all stay by themselves in my house. I'd be like, I'm out. I'll be back. Word. Think I won't. No, I mean, I'm still, I'm still good. I'm just, I'm seeing around me. Change. I'm still, I still go through. I gotta do. We talk about. I don't do diapers. I don't do like I still. I have, I'm chilling. No Uncle Paul. No changing mm, diapers. Oh, no. I mean, it's Uncle Paul. It's like, oh, Uncle Paul smelled something. Here you go. Uh, <laughs> oh, man, we go. You we gonna rock man. out. We gonna rock out when you turn three. And you can hit this bathroom by yourself. <laughs> Not by yourself at three. No, no, you still oh got to go. You I got to supervise the children. Oh my I don't, God. I'm just saying that supervisor, but I'm not like wiping. Changing. I got you. I got you. And you know what I'm saying? I'll supervise. You know, we're not letting no R. Kelly's or MJ's roll through, but at the same time, I'm not getting my hands dirty either. So, you know, oh, but I, I, I love the kids. All right. I love the kids. Uncle Paul and love also, the kids. I like Uncle Paul more, love the kids. <laughs> Uncle Paul loves the kids. But more importantly, Uncle Paul loves the park. And you can't go to the park when you're a six foot something black man by yourself. So I need a kid. No, you would get locked. You'd be locked up. Super and locked the, up. And I need a kid. Registry. Or, or um, a woman with me so that I can. I don't have a Kelly money, so we can't we can't play those games. Take those chances. Smart. Smart. Oh, the day that you have the child, I will relish in these moments that we're having. Oh, my goodness. The day that I can see we find now. out I can see that a child I can see is you on the way. through these video clips. Just yes. peace with them together. Here I you go. Be, I am going to share blocks of this That's for fine. every month of gestation. I'm yeah. with it. Get, I'm with it. This, <laughs> right? I'm cool with it. Look, this is how I feel about it. When I don't have kids, I gotta go and lead extra hard into it, and hopefully, I'll be leading this hard into it when I have kids. The same way that if I'm in a relationship, I lean into single life extra hard, and when I'm in a relationship, I try to lean into it at least 75, 80 percent as hard. Try. I need y'all to hear Listen, the operative word. Try. I need. See, I need us to understand that honesty is key. Let me tell you something. <laughs> that shit right there has been the bane of my fucking week. You friggin' men. Just I can't. Yo, we're the with the damn honesty. With the honesty shit, I'm just being honest, and I try, and, you know, second and third and fourth fucking women, I am dying. Like, Wait, second and third and fourth women? Whoa. Uh, that's where the after-after after after show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, after-after. Right. After. Like, I mean, no, here. every, no, really, like, coming back to the shows on poly, everybody's polyamorous, I'm certain. Everyone. I believe it. No, seriously. I'm certain that every person is polyamorous and they just want you to fall in line with the whole whatever, whatever. And um, I'm not with the shits currently. So I'm going to bow out. Move to the south. It's not as many. It's not as open down here. Move to the south. That's true. That's that's progressive stuff. LA, New York, San Francisco, That's Portland. True. So what say you when at Although least, we when do have a sw- we do have a swingers house in, in uh Apex which is like 3, three miles from my house. So I mean they, they they throw parties and all kinds of shit. So, I'm not going to lie. I've, I've pockets, heard about It's definitely pocket. But. I've heard about North Carolina, but that's not here nor there. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, but what, say, <laughs> what, what, what? But what say you when at least one of the individuals is from Kentucky? That is the South. Last I checked, no. Yeah, right. Oh, it is. I mean, but you know, Kentucky, Kentucky, wow, man, you can't. Come on now. <laughs> I don't know nothing about it. I just know the person. I don't know. Oh, uh, that's fair. You know what? That's right. You know, it, Kentucky is kind of wild, so you gotta, you know. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta tread lightly with the Kentucky life. Just, mm. Be safe. I, you know, I don't even know. I think what's happening is there's this divergence away from. I just, 
I don't want any strings. I just, I just want to kind of keep shit light. And if, you know, and by keeping yeah. stuff light, you know, right. I could see black, her, black, right. and I could see you and, you know. We gonna all see each other. We just gonna, all, right. We're gonna all see each other. And when um, did we get there? Like that's, you know, not, when did we get there? Like, when did that happen? Cause I've been out the game. I've been out the minute. game for like, when did, oh, 19 like, when years. Did we, so, when did we all see each other? When did that happen? So, years. Uh, I'm all right I, if you see somebody else and I'm seeing somebody else, but we got to all see each other? Like, when did that become a thing? Wait, uh, before years. you go, and here's the thing. Here, Here's my thing, right? So, inevitably, at least in my world, right? Can't speak for every woman, but in my world, we flow and we flow and we flow. Until, you know. Wait, until it's like, so I want to take it to this next level. You my girl or not, nah, right? Okay, cool. <laughs> so, right. So then we do that, right? Because you want more from me, right? So I give you. Cool. Um, but like, then it's like, we in a friend relationship, we in a relationship. I, well, why we got to have titles? We just... Ooh, no, not right? that and then people. wait and then homegirl on the other end her shit her drama her trauma whenever she stepped on the scene for seeing I, now that becomes mine because i've got to get a, I, I've, because we want to keep janine happy too right so we got to figure out like okay mm -hmm. like i'm sorry but i got to deal with this with her and so now mm -hmm. i've got to I, now i'm saddled with the drama and the trauma of somebody i don't know no, 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 oh, and, and no. That's improper. That's improper management of gray zone. So Teach these fuckers. Flag, 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 put the course out. That's the class. I was about to say that's the class. That's a class. It's a master class. With the books in the background. That's right. It's a master class. I'm just saying, flag all the play. Whoever you talking to is violating. That uh, he violating the gray zone. You need him to calm down. If you're gonna keep it separate, keep it separate. Unless you start off with this thing being a all hands on deck situation, it doesn't need to change my way. That's, that's the simple. only way. And when, when we say all hands on deck, can we just be clear that this is like a six sure. five situation, right? Right, right. I mean, okay, so here's, here's, my, here's my thing. And we are, we are moving into a whole nother, man, this would have been, anyway. <laughs> my thing on the sister wife situation is, it's a lot of people that are against sister wives that low key still live in sister wife lives. Cause That's you got a true. lot of dudes who got three, That's four, true. five baby mamas who all know about each other and all their kids are like interpolated, but they not down with bringing all the funds to one situation. Like, I like, why'd you save That's your money? True. Have this one stay home. She don't really work anyway and take care of everybody like said just you already cool with it you clearly know this dude is bouncing back and forth you got you a jody go ahead and uh everybody chipping on this rent and stop playing <laughs> <laughs> but, <Yeah. laughs> you already oh, live in sister yeah. wife out here this and you the one I'm with the car man. so you know make some rules and, and get it together but that's not here nor there digress the gray zone situation I mean, I think a few years ago, and I think that it comes from social media, and it comes from how prevalent the internet is and access to information is and stuff. Like, you don't have to make choices anymore. Everything's kind of instant. So it carries over. It's spilled over into everything, right? Like, you got Postmates. You got people they pull up. You got Tinder. You got Grindr. You got, you know, whatever it is that you use, you could have a... Uh, your sexual fantasies delivered to your door the same way that you could have groceries or, uh, you know, Pizza Hut. That's a fact. So now you start talking about this, like, commitment stuff and working through issues and things that aren't fun and pleasurable and putting in effort. And all I have to do is swipe left, swipe right, send a couple of eggplant emojis and see who says yes. Like you, you not try to do a lot. No, <laughs> <laughs> like it don't have to be. Bro. You know? you preaching the word right though. You right. 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 well, I'm just saying so, so. So you have a bunch of people who are used to that, and then you know 
now they're getting older so you got this like low patience low work for things for real kind of just will be open flow and if you coming back in the game and you know you out here on that hookah and moesha vibe yeah this is different it's gonna be it's gonna be a struggle i can see it i can see you know moesha was out here low-key living sister wife herself but when she was mad, everybody was like, yeah, you could be mad. Why are we driving these Jeep trucks for $1.96? Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I'm talking to you. I can't so, you. I mean, so look, I, I, I don't, I don't have <laughs> an issue with flowing because at present, and, you know, we won't get too deep, but y'all know the deal. Um, yeah. I, flowing's good right now. It's right. good. I think the danger zone, however, for me, in my opinion, and I could be wrong, is when we're supposed to be flowing. Correct. We've, agro- we, we've agreed to the flow. And because you like what you're getting in the flow, you decided to elevate me to various levels that now feel, Gotta lock it down. That now feel and operate like something unflowish. Like just for you just right. for you though whatever that, that that makes no difference to me you know because because i mean some of that is propaganda too you know it, it right because you're telling the next chick that shit too so i that that, that doesn't move me this is trump's america right we gotta we gotta be like our president in aspects of life but That's it's like happening. you know keep keep your shit you know pink pinkies up and and just chill but you're doing the most and you wanting the most and but we but we but then I'm supposed to flow when now I got to hear about I'm not gonna be in a flow mode. I'm gonna wanna chop you in your neck. I'm gonna wanna throat chop you. You know, I mean like real talk. That's <laughs> because, over. because you're because now over. you're because now you're dangerous and you're playing a dangerous game and you're fucking with people's emotions when we never needed to go there in the first place because emotions are tricky like let's be real which is why we were flowing in the first place i mean you know trump's america best ever you know set it up i don't know i don't know i don't i mean i just feel like it's a lot of it's a lot of uh man I don't know, male privilege type mm-hmm. stuff. Like, it's a double standard, you know what I mean? Because nobody is, like, really out here trying to listen to that the other way around. I can I can see that. Like, right. dudes are going to be like, oh, you need to be giving me these elevated moves, do 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 but at the same time, I'm going to need you to let me live because you knew what it was. Uh, you know. Yeah, and yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah, no. And and I guess I appreciate the fact that there is a certain delegation of women that are playing that game, which makes it bad for those of us who aren't equipped or have no tolerance for it. So I guess right. that's the other um, aspect of it. But these are some dangerous games out here in these streets. It, it's, these are dangerous times. It's the wild this is like This is like Hunger world. Games kind of shit. And um. Mm-mm. I got kids to mind. I can't. I can't get locked sure. up. I Tell me, you know the vibes. Yeah. Uh, what was that dream? Dream dog drink. Uh, that that mixtape. Yeah. Yeah. You know the vibes. No. Mm-mm. No. I'm gonna this, send you the link. C- CBD. <laughs> this is why CBD is good. This is why. CBD. Right. Keep it chill. Keep it Keep chill. It chill. Right. Keep it chill. Keep it chill. Keep it chill. Vibe out. You know, nobody gets hurt. That kind of shit. Paul, get that master class going for your people down. Yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. For your for your species. When I was a younger person, these were different different times. You know, like, I'm older like, like like last year, right? I don't yeah. play these. I don't play these reindeer games. <laughs> Cause you got your ass got burned. That's why you ain't playing them games. I quit Christmas. <clears throat> See what I'm saying? Like last year. No! Wow! Wow! Okay, okay, okay. Hold up! Okay. All right, all right, all right. 
right. All right. <laughs> Fake news. Fake news. Yeah, nah, he's a, he's a sad, so he's gonna slip and slide all over this conversation. They're good at that shit. Very wow. good. This is what we're doing tonight. Master slippers and sliders, you Sagittarius. Oh, truth is truth. Goodness. I hear no refuting it. I came here to talk about CBD and whether or not it is legal. You How came we here, here to talk about yawning. You came on the damn You're show. Right. I you was tired. It. Listen. I was not. I'm not even gonna lie. I was trying so hard. I didn't think I was gonna be able to get up and walk on. I was like, oh. We're we so glad you made it. We are so pleased. I am. I have no excuse because you were out the game last week. I was like, man, Sarah was sick. I'm yeah, it was, sick a, right now. It was a serious complain. situation. And I couldn't complain because I don't got no kids. And y'all probably live the hours that are killing me all the time. So I was like, I just got so up. <laughs> But crazy times. But crazy you, made, times. you made it. You made it. I did. Yeah. And I'm enjoying. I'm enjoying. I mean, I thought Dragon was going to hold me down with that support. But uh, nope. he, he kind of dipped real quick. So Clearly not. Sarah had to act like the cannabis sativa that we are and invigorate you. See how that hey, works? Hey, here. I'm with it. Let's go. Activated. Activated. Now he's ready to go. He's about to knock out. Mad work, mad projects, all that. What? Oh, yeah, that's it. That's exactly <laughs> it's like, it. yeah, right. <laughs> sure. Yeah, <I'm> it. <laughs> that project called Project BED. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to get into this. Let's let's do it. I, uh, table, pillow. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to go with a topic right now that's related to CBD. I'm gonna put it up on uh on my YouTube for uh for the business related to cybersecurity. That's what I'm doing. I'm gonna sit up here and call with a topic for y'all. That's what No, that um that thing you did about trademarks and patents and software. I was yeah. feeling that. You nerded out on that one. I was still I'm sorry, that. you know, I'm going to things personally over here on that front. So I was <laughs> <laughs> been doing a lot a lot of investigation, get a little, <laughs> little nerve. <laughs> this is see what this is what I'll be talking about on growth on my terms is from that place of pain that these Listen. things happen <laughs> literally mm -hmm. it's from exactly. the pain of it literally that you burst exactly. some shit that can help exactly. other people that's so true anything i could do to add value i'm, I'm definitely down nz so what do y'all have going on i will be speaking in here in raleigh <laughs> next week at the triangle business women's event on a panel about tech addiction and why we are so addicted to our phones and what we can do to better manage that. So I'm excited for that panel. That's going to be great. Yay. That's pretty dope. Yeah. Pablo. Yeah, here. Um, what am I doing? I am working on this uh, course for students, uh, for fifth to eighth graders to learn how to make apps without code for Android, as well as introducing them to computational thinking. So I've been working on shooting and then uh, getting ready to do some cybersecurity awareness training. So that will be interesting and fun. And then I'm going to Harvard next week to speak to uh, their postdocs about transitioning from academia to industry. So that's kind of cool. Just drop, yeah. Just drop that yeah. name and I'm going to no, go yeah, I'm trying to get on my Janine, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> So, so but can we dope. talk can we just talk about the accolades for the year so far? Just like, for real. So I mean, cause like Stanford, you know that was me winning the beginning of the year. Then we Fast. got Sarah on a top one hundred um voices and HR tech. Come on. Um, Congrats, by, by the way. I saw that. Thank let's you. Thank you. Like, let's Thank talk you. about that. And, and the black enterprise black like enterprise. official Okay. You know, yeah, we're um, blowing up and blowing up. You know, Harvard. The is going to Harvard. I'm so, I'm so blessed. Thank Indeed. 
And so today I just wrapped an interview with the Elixir Edge for their Freedom and Success Summit. And that will be coming out in the next two weeks. That was quite possibly one of the most, the best interviews I've ever had. You know, you've done an interview, you've done them all sometimes. Like, you know, they ask you the same shit. It's like, you know, what books are on your show? And Mm -hmm. what entrepreneur do you look up to? It was none of that. And um, oh, that's great. Yeah, I can't wait for you guys to see the interview. We ended up doing it in two parts. I ended up missing my son's spring party, however. So there was a set of mom guilt on my heart as I I left. I was like, oh my God, I missed the whole party. But I was on video. There was no possible way for me to like, Texas teacher, you know, and keep in. Yeah. I was like, I'm so sorry. I owe you like all the cookies, all the, <laughs> all the, all the chips, all, all the, the ice cream. But yeah. Milk it, young man. Milk he was. It. He was like, I was okay, mommy. I didn't need you after all. I was like, Kids be so unaffected. Exactly. Like, we feel horrible. Kids be <laughs> like, whatever. It's yeah, like, they be so unaffected. Literally. Like, me and my crew were out here winning. What are you talking about? I told you he's he's already macking and in, in preschool, so he was being uh, doted on by the the girlfriend's mom who who stepped um, in and and that's what you do it for. People think that you're dating for the girl. It's for her parents. Bro. her mom will take care of you when i there's this girl that i know like we kind of talked for a little bit and it didn't work out her mom still <laughs> hooked me up to this day i go stay at her parents house without her her brothers i'm cool with the whole family that's when <laughs> remember when i said we made made families living over here and sliding yeah, here, no here sliding. and there <laughs> I love Listen, y'all. You know I do. I love me a sad child. She got Here. her own situations. She got her dude, whatever. And I'm still cool with the family. You kids keep. Why can't you be cool with family members? That's not okay. So we can play that for so I'm, I'm, I'm gonna that's just a whole yeah, that's, that's a whole show. nother show. But I'll I'll say mm-hmm. this. I I understand. I dated somebody many, many moons ago who was a Sag, by the way. Oh boy, okay? we on this though. And right. anyhow, but I loved his family. Amazing. I mean, mom, everybody just loved, loved, loved them. And they loved me. And for years, I did exactly what you do or what you're alluding to. I mean, I would still send the Mother's Day cards and all that stuff. And then it just got weird. Then it was just like, eh. it gets weird. It gets weird, you know. And and what ended up, and also, it was giving her, the mother, false hope. Because even though he was dating other people, her message to me was very different. It was, oh, honey, are you dating anybody? Uh huh. Are you married? No, ma'am. Oh, well, good. Stay that way. He'll come around. And that's when I knew it was time yeah, to escape because every different. encounter I had with her was literally like, please marry my son, you know, kind of situation. And mm-hmm. and I, I mean, I love him to this day, but he, yeah, we were long, long done. And it was, yeah, yeah. But so. No, no, this is, this, that's a little, that's a little deeper situation than what I was talking about. That, no, I'm not doing Why that. would I think it'd be any deeper with you? Like I said, here. <laughs> Yo, for the Zodiac, for the Zodiac crew, they are here and there, there <laughs> and here, slipping and sliding, slicksters, these ones, these arrowed ones, really, of y'all, but this is the truth, highly compatible with Sagittarius, but for this, but as I get older, this aesthetic, is it, it grinds on me, like, here and there, there and here. Always Listen. sliding, always in and out, never stationary. Mm-mm. Stationary? What you talking about? I've been in Nashville for almost a decade. I'm solid. Life. We talking about romance, bro. Two different things. I talk about location. <laughs> <laughs> right. Because you slip it. Ah, Thank you. I talk about location. I talk about location. Let's stay focused. Location, location. That's not what we were talking about, though. <laughs> I'm so glad Machabe is back. 
Because, see, if not, I would just be... Yo, Dragonfly, where are you at, bro? <laughs> Dragonfly is gone. He oh, dipped out quick. Man. Like, bye. Dragonfly, don't let me see you in the Periscope next week, fam. <laughs> you might see him around the corner. He in your state. Oh, word? Yeah, word. See? Who knew? Who knew? Live and learn. You live and learn. Well, Chiefs... It's been a great show. See, that's so in line, chiefing. Well, we say that in New York anyhow. But mm -hmm. thank you for tuning in. We will be back next week with a whole new show. Probably a lot of ratchet because it's hot topics. We haven't done that. Ooh, hot topics. Yay. We haven't done that here yet. So nah, I'm right. excited. You know, I've been getting up on my ratchet TV. So I'm be ready. Indeed. Ready. Indeed. All right, guys, have a great rest of the week. We'll see you next week. All right. Bye, Bye everyone.